Right everyone, so we're back today to make another video on my channel, Hampshire Spaniel Training. Now in this episode today, we're gonna to be talking about what are the fundamental differences between a Cocker and a Springer. These two are a good example because they're both dogs, they're both very well bred, and they're of a very similar age. If you've been on my channel before, you might well have seen Charlie's vlog series, which you can go back and watch from his training from 12 weeks onwards, and the same with Billy. Just quickly before we get started, if you're looking for any help, perhaps you're getting a puppy soon, or you have a youngster or a slightly older dog and you're looking for some support and help, perhaps look at doing my online training, which is all done through WhatsApp, where you get to work directly with me. You standing up then, Charlie, were you? Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty. What's the difference between a Cocker and a Springer? I'll put these two guys away first, then we'll get going. Heel. Right, so we're back to talk about the characteristical differences between Cockers and Springers. Now this is a generalization, so this is based off my experience as a professional, working with hundreds and hundreds of dogs, training lots of dogs with people, training my own dogs and competing. Fundamentally, they're two dogs that are designed to more or less do the same job, which is to hunt, find, flush, and in some cases, obviously retrieve. Some people use them as beating dogs, some people use them as picking up dogs, some people might use them as uh, rough shooting dogs, which also goes into trialing, which is where the dogs uh, compete against each other. But fundamentally, they are very, very similar dog. Springer like for like will naturally be a harder hunting dog, bigger in size, generally more powerful. The cocker need naturally more scent to motivate them. So at a, a, a trial, cockers do well when there's plenty of game scent. They show themselves very well, but Springers can show themselves just as well when there's a lot less game. The Cockers therefore can fluctuate in their pace a lot more. So I often say Cockers can fluctuate 60, 70%. So one minute you're getting first gear, the next minute you're getting fifth gear. Whereas with the Springers, they tend to show you everything they've got more of the time. So you tend to stand, sorry, you tend to know where you stand with them better. In that clip before, as I said, when I got the dogs out, Charlie, who is for a cocker, very, very honest, like he will hunt and flush a bird and sit himself up. I don't have to put any whistle on him. He's very, very good like that. And he does want to please. He doesn't battle me. But if he does think I'm not paying attention, he will take the Michael a little bit and he will get away. And like, at, like when I let them out here, they come out, I say toilet, they have a run round, they do their ablutions, go to their toilet. But he's the one that will always just go a little bit further and take take the mickey out of the situation. So I'm always saying to people, Spaniels are a bit like a remote control car. You need to be driving them. If you're not driving them, they can very easily crash, okay? But the Cocker is just a little bit more sensitive to that. Other characteristical traits is, I would say with Springers, they're much more likely to be ball mad, for example. And a ball mad dog is an easy dog to train generally, if you get everything right. And cockers, their drive for uh, hunting for uh, less natural retrieves, not so good. So they, again, they tend to show themselves better on, on natural scent. I've, I had a friend years ago, had a really good trialing bitch. Um, but if you took it out in the summer, it would literally just plod about. You wouldn't think that that dog could win a trial. But in the winter months, it would literally light up on game. Whereas with the springers, they tend to show themselves on a much more even kill across the board. Now you might say, Chris, hey, you look, I've had springers that were really devious or I've had cockers that are really, really honest. Yes, I've had both as well. But as a generalization, if I look across all the hundreds and hundreds of dogs I've worked in, in various manners, generally speaking, the springer is going to be more compliant and wanting to please slightly more. Whereas the cocker will look for any weakness in your armor or any chinks in your armor to take advantage of you. But as long as you stay consistent and you're not blase with them and you have good training structure and you don't take your after ball, they are fantastic dogs. And I can see why the boom in popularity is with them because they're a smaller version of the Springer. The white hair doesn't show up so much everywhere. And they're in the sense of being a smaller dog, more manageable, but they do have this slightly more devious side. Often people say to me, hey, Chris Springer's there mental. It's like, yeah, you're just seeing a harder hunting dog more of the time. But as long as you manage it, they're actually an easier dog generally to train. And I've had lots of both. 
I am probably more of a cocker man than I am a Springer man, but the Springer is probably generally the more straightforward dog to go with. Harder hunting, generally a more natural retrieve. Like my Springer will hunt really, really hard for a tennis ball. To be fair to Charlie, he is a fantastic hunting dog, even for a tennis ball, like one of the best I've had. Like he will hunt like hell to find a tennis ball. And a lot of cockers, when they get on to the game, aren't so keen to go back to dummies. So that's a good tip for you. If you've got a cocker, get as much of your handling training done on dummies before you go on to too much game. If you get them onto a lot of games, sometimes they will not want to go back to dummies as readily um, as a Springer would. My Springer still now will hunt harder for a tennis ball than he would on a bit of pheasant scent. We will slowly translate that over for sure, but he's definitely slightly more, more ball mad, which as I said, whether Cocker or Springer, a ball mad dog is a lot easier to train. Anyway, I hope this video has been some help. Don't forget to subscribe and like guys. If you have any questions, stick them in the description below. Otherwise, happy training guys.